Even the tutorial of this game tells you to delete the sun so it launches all the planets out into space. Anyways, we don't need a guide to do what we're going to do today. I wonder how hard it would be to turn this into a planet like Jupiter. That's probably going to be pretty good for all the life involved too. Didn't this used to have a ring? Well, new Jupiter is going to have a ring. First, I think we need to turn the temperature up a bit. It's looking a smidge cold. Apparently 13 degrees is cold enough for snow, but I'm no scientist. That does look like a typical day in Canada to me, but we're going to go ahead and turn this up to about 20 degrees because small increments are important. Trust me, I've poofed the earth enough times to know little itty bitty changes add up over time. See, there we go. Everyone's happy. We have like 40% less snow all over the world, though we seem to have a strange patch over here. But a snowy patch somewhere on the earth is the least of its problems right now because we need to make it a little bit bigger. And alarmingly, we're actually allowed to play directly with the surface now. So if we wanted taller mountains, we could probably just adjust the elevation span. Well, we're locked in on 21. We could change that to something different. I honestly expected the earth to poof from that, though it looks like something's happening. Next, let's go ahead and increase the size, because the size is going to change everything anyways. So far, this actually looks okay, though it got away from us. I used to making it bigger would make it hotter, and that seems to have had little effect on the thawing. Have you ever seen a dog come in covered in rain or snow or mud? What it does to get rid of it, it shakes violently back and forth. So naturally, all we have to do is change the rotational period. Instead of turning once per day, it's going to turn 10 times per day. That should eject everything off it, perhaps people included. I just realized I did that wrong. 0.1 days is its rotational period, so it's going to rotate 10 times a day. Or 2.4 hours if we want to get really technical about it. This game definitely going to make me feel stupid. Mm, so far it seems to be holding on to its snow coat. But what if we just went like 0. 0.0001? And I haven't adjusted the speed of the simulation, so this is the actual cape. People are probably not having a great time anymore. Though to be fair, they probably froze to death many years ago. And how's its orbit doing? We've been messing with it for a while without really checking on its trajectory. If other planets were smart, they'd get away from me too. I think it's about time we inject a little more hydrogen into it. I mean, does this not look like Jupiter? I'm actually killing it so far. I'm pretty sure there's like a stripe on Jupiter somewhere, so if we just kind of tilt the camera, that's actually pretty close already. And if you're worried about the people living on this planet, don't. They're long dead. Basically, I just need to add the ring and we're done. Don't worry, I'm clearly a professional. I bet you never knew this is how the planets were formed. Don't know how I managed to get some way up there, but that's okay. They'll either conform to the group or take off into space. Either way, not my problem anymore. Now, it might look like nothing's moving, but time is moving very slowly. Our planet just turns very quickly. So let's turn the speed up until something starts happening. We're starting to see some movement. I don't think we need to see the trails anymore. We understand the planets, the little guys are probably going to follow our planet. Although they might not at the same time. I need them to form a ring, please. Uh, yeah, this might actually work not bad. Hmm, every once in a while it seems to eject things outwards. They have sort of an elliptical orbit. And you know what? I'm pretty sure rings in real life do anyways. All right, now it's time to grade ourselves. How does our makeshift Jupiter compare to real Jupiter? Luckily, I can actually just go ahead and throw one down. I might have been a little off on a size. I forgot how much bigger it actually is. Considering I was winging it, I'm proud of what I've done. We have a fun explode option now. It even says auto energy. We can control the energy. All right, well, let's, uh, yeah, go ahead and crank that up to max, which is a little above megaton TNT, but just below 1A supernova. We're not going to have that. We're going to do supernova power. Just a hunch, but I feel like it's probably going to bring Jupiter with it. Real Jupiter, that is. If we play, is it going to expand out? Ooh, okay. And that's all right. Real Jupiter was better anyways. And I've always told myself I'd make an excellent surgeon. I'm kind of wondering if I could cut out, say, North America and put it somewhere else. First of all, let's get rid of some of the snow so we can actually see what we're doing. The minimum temperature is going to be 12 degrees Celsius. That should melt all the snow, right? Somehow it didn't really melt all the snow. It took care of a lot of it, but we need a little more heat. We're going to go 30 degrees. That's definitely a little better. Now we can start to work with our laser. We've just got to figure out exactly what kind of laser we want. A radius of a meter isn't going to work. Let's go for, say, 100 meters. The total power, I imagine, has got to be pretty strong to be able to uh, cut through the Earth. So we're going to go with, like, 50,000 watts. The power per area, I don't really know. So we're just going to go with a big number there, too. That's red enough to me. Let's uh, give it a little bit of a test over here. So far, it doesn't really seem to have any effect on the ocean, at least. So let's work our way up. KW, MW, GW, I double. Just cranked it up to maximum power and this is happening. Don't know what I did to the earth. I obviously nuked it pretty badly, but I just wanted to cut out North America. I mean, I'm okay with the fact that I just killed the entire planet. 
7 billion people just in a day's work, but I really wanted to cut that out. What's the point of a laser beam if it just explodes whatever it is you're pointing at? Stupid lasers never letting me have any fun. You think there's any way to turn the ocean into lava? In theory, if I shoot a hot enough laser at the ocean, it will just evaporate. But if we turn the boiling point up, that might not happen. I don't know if A is higher than Celsius or not, so we're just gonna go with it. Probably also gonna need to turn this temperature up. Minus degrees are not good for lava. 35 degrees. Maximum temperature, let's go for a balmy 100 degrees Celsius. And let's start there and see exactly what effect that has on our little planet. So far, nothing too drastic, so this is a promising start. Now, I can launch iron at the planet. Lava, in theory, is just kind of molten iron. We'll pretend that's a thing. But we're probably not going to do it at 3 billion times light speed because that's just going to annihilate the earth and everything nearby. So let's try a piece of iron that's uh, very small to start with so I don't annihilate the earth. We'll uh, set it like that. There's actually some there somewhere and we're going to hit play. There goes the iron. Okay, that didn't blow up the earth. We're doing good. So let's go up to kilograms and fire iron kilos at the earth. And so far that seemed to have no effect at all. But don't let it fool you. This is what the game wants you to think. I've played this game before. It'll do absolutely nothing until it just poofs the earth out of existence because it hits it so damn hard. So I guess let's hit it with an atmosphere worth of iron. Pretty nervous about this. I feel like the atmosphere is pretty heavy. And the ocean just ate it up. This ocean is a little bit tougher than I thought it would be. So let's crank it up to ocean size. We're going to fire the ocean at the ocean. Uh, and so far, it doesn't seem too bothered by anything we've done. Actually, for as many things as I've fired at this orb, it looks like it's in reasonably good shape. All right, so let's take things into our own hands. We're going to go kilos. We get to pick our amount of kilos. We're going to go 100,000 kilos of iron at 5,000 kilometers a second directly into the ocean. And nothing seems to be happening. We just need more particle mass then. How about that? Fire, fire, fire. Press play and I'm not even seeing it anymore. All right, when in doubt, when your iron doesn't work, just fire random objects at the earth. That was bigger than I thought, but created some magma. A little bit got into land. Uh, sorry about that, India, but sacrifices have to be made. Just got to be a little more careful where we fire. Now, judging by the Earth's orbit, yeah, this is going to work out great. I can totally turn this into lava now. I'm actually mad now that I spent so much time warming the Earth up earlier when I could have just been firing these things at it the whole time. This should make it plenty hot. It's kind of fun to watch from a side view. Ooh, that was a little bit closer to uh, land than I would have liked. But you know what? I regret nothing. Although I did spill a pretty big drop of meteor right in the middle of North America. And I don't really know what it is that I'm firing at Earth, but it's just the right size. I got very lucky. I'm not sure why so many things land over here near Australia, but they do. And that's no fault of mine. I take no responsibility for that whatsoever. Watch this. Perfect. Right in between the continents. Getting a little bit hard to work in the tight spaces. I think we burned Australia. Look how much better this is now. Average temperature snuck up to 1480 degrees Celsius, so we might have to wait for it to cool down a little bit before it's habitable again. But I think I've more or less accomplished my goal of turning the oceans into magma. I actually really like the way this looks from the distance. It's a vast improvement on today's Earth. If anyone ever wants their planet turned into a glowing ball of doom, you know where to find me.